well my dear students this is 30 in the series of mechanics of metal forming uh in 32nd lecture we started the finite finite element modeling technique for metal forming so we would if you recall back the previous lecture uh we started the basic concept of finite element method so let us continue with the same and uh, as i told the the whole basic concept of finite element method is if i say in three step it is the pre processing then solver and the post processing pre processing where we take the domain of the uh, interest this case it is metal forming may be any process so this domain is discretized we break the whole domain into small small elements and nodes that is called as discretization and then we choose the proper uh, type of element uh, the interpolation function between the uh, uh, between the nodes and uh, many other issues as discussed last time and then once the whole pre processing that means discretization choosing of a proper element and all those things are done then we can go ahead uh, for the solving of the problem so solving also uh, i as i told you tomorrow uh, three major process where we uh, solving three different direct approach and then uh, 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 Galerian approach and all those things we discuss. So let us start with the that same. And uh, if you recall, we concerned with solving the basic equations. As I last time, if you recall the equation where uh, there was over the a given volume of the domain. Uh, the surface that the uh, the t bar if you look at this integral equation where uh, the one equation one can find it out for uh, every choice of uh, delta v x so that's if you look at this equation over the surface and then plus over the volume that equals whole volume the integral over whole volume Uh, sigma x bar uh, delta epsilon and dv so but you know that uh, the u bar x uh, which is infinite infinitely uh, infinitely uh, many values has got so equation cannot be solved if it is so 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 for getting the answer for uh, u bar x that is the the field variable uh one has to find with a safe function as i told you n n x so that is uh, u bar x uh, for finding the answer the values of the field variables so one has to sum up all the elements the values all nodes nodal values and therefore we propose a safe function for solving the equations so uh, if you use the same safe function uh, for uh, delta v bar x as well in that case what will happen which is given here delta v bar x would be equal to the summation for the n elements uh, 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 delta v n capital n n x bar so nn is actually safe function 
the type of safe function you choose. Actually, uh, the choice of safe function n n, it depends uh, that uh, on how do you divide the region into elements and, uh, and how do you choose a pop proper polynomial n n, capital N n. So, that is the uh, de 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 uh, deciding about the, uh, the region of the element, how do you break the whole element uh, region into elements and the selecting of a proper polynomial capital N n. So, if you look at this figure, uh, the how the elements are divided here. See, it is all triangular element, then further smaller element and then there one can go for the, uh, the quadrilateral element like that. So, it what happens? The safe function is such that capital N n, when you choose capital N n, that is the, the safe function, uh, polynomial for the, the safe function capital N n. It, this thing should be kept in mind that uh, capital N n is 1 at all the node values, at all the nodes. If there are n nodes, then at all nodes, n number of nodes, the capital N n must be 1 and when the, if suppose m is the number of elements and n is the capital uh, number of nodes, if you suppose any problem. So, uh, capital N n must be 1 at all the nodes and it should be 0 everywhere, where uh, uh, nodes m and n are not equal at those nodes where m and n, and n are not equal everywhere it should be 0. So, uh, capital N safe function will yield n equations with n unknowns, right. This thing, this point has to be noted very carefully. So, that means, if you look at this figure, five different figures which is possibility of dividing the whole reason, if you look at. So, that means, n safe function will yield how many equations? n capital N equations and the where you can get n unknown values. So, uh, that means, you can now get the basic equation for nodal variables. So, what becomes the basic equation for nodal variables? This is given here. So, the basic equation for nodal variables becomes that is the integral over the surface T bar delta V bar d s plus integral over the volume f bar delta v bar and d v and this two summation must be equal to over the, the whole volume of interest sigma multiplied by uh, delta epsilon d v and that is nothing but uh, the function capital F bar u uh, bar multiplied by uh, delta V bar and that is equal to capital R bar uh, delta V bar, where uh, capital F bar U bar is equal to capital R. So, that means, uh, it is now true that the internal forces are equal to external forces, right. So, uh, suppose the problem is a linear problem, right if it is a linear problem, then uh, that means, capital F is almost uh, representing capital U. That means, for the linear problem, uh, capital K multiplied by U, if it is suppose displacement, U bar is displacement. So, that must be equal to force, right. So, that force, which I said as F bar U that would be equal to r bar, because earlier I represented it as r bar and where k is taken as the stiffness matrix. So, this is for one element please remember, we are considering the basic equation for one nodal variables. So, that is k u bar is equal to r bar and where k is the stiffness matrix, right. So, this is what the basic. So, if I uh, summarize the FEM method, what have you have? what we have done so far that first you discretize the partial differential equation. The partial differential equation represents the physics of a problem. 
like if it is metal forming, so the constitutive equations of metal forming, right. If it is a heat flow problem, so constitutive equations of heat flow problem. If it is fluid flow problem, then the constitutive equations of fluid flow problem. So, likewise. So, first thing is that you discretize the partial differential equation. Then use principle of virtual work, right. Then divide the solution region into simply shaped element, very simple uh, element one must take, not very complicated elements. And then make the simple uh, polynomial that has to uh, represent the elements, right. And then partial differential equations become matrix form, then this partial differential equation uh, is converted into a matrix form which is soluble and which is one can assemble over the matrices and then one can solve it for the, uh, the whole unknown variables, nodal unknown variables. So, as I told you the choosing a proper element is very, very important for getting a, an accurate result for any finite element solution. So, choosing the right element that also depends on the safe function capital N n, right. That means, as I told you uh, the field variable u bar x bar, x is the direction where the variation occurs. So, that is equal to the summation over n elements u uh, bar n capital N n x bar. So, that is the safe function. So, number 1 for every node n of an element there is a safe function which is capital N n x bar, one has to remember this. So, for every node n of an element there is a safe function capital N n x bar that is 1 at this node and 0 at all other nodes, that is what is the definition of safe function. Secondly, the safe function is the polynomial of lowest order with property which is there in 1, just mentioned that is it is 1 at this particular node of the interest and it is 0 everywhere, right. So, this 2 point has to satisfy with any safe function. Uh, one can go for a linear uh, safe function, one can go for quadratic safe function one can go for uh, other safe function. Suppose, one takes a 1D problem. So, look at this figure. For 1D problem, this is the case. So, you have element 1, element 2 and element 3. So, because it is 1D, so one can see here that, that there are three elements now. So, there are four nodes here. The round blackened part represents node and in between line represents element. So, element 1, element 2 and element 3 are uh, there in this figure within these four nodes. And now, you see if one chooses the linear safe function. So, that is how the linear safe function has been said. That means, if you take the element number 1 and node 1. So, node 1 the value is 1 and the node 2 it is value is 0, right. If you take the element number 2, the value is 1 and all other it is 0, right. So, one can see here. So, this is the left side which is given for the linear element. If you take a quadratic element on the other side on the figure, the element 1 and element 2 only if you choose the quadratic safe function has been shown. You can see, right. So, this is how the, uh, it is very important to choose a right element. 
the right I must say the right element. If you hang over otherwise you will hang over the result will not come correct. So, these are some of the issues. Uh, this is was for one dimension and if, if it happens for a multi dimensional element then the same function of a four node element which is bilinear is can be like this here. So, same function uh, of a four nodal element uh, that is a bilinear uh, that is the case where the multi dimensional elements can have. So, this figure shows the safe function for a four node element which is a bilinear one can see that is the three directions now. On the other hand uh, if you look at the this figure the just uh, the safe which is shown it for safe function of a 9 node element which is bi quadratic. You, you can see the variation of the safe function. And the last one shows the safe function of a 8 node element which is bi quadratic. So, you can see here. Now, you look at the, the variation how it is varying. So, this is the case these three different cases for multi dimensional element. So, it is very important to choose the right element. Then the second thing is that one has to choose the element properties. For an example, the element properties means if I ask what is the strain. So, the strain uh, one the epsilon is equal to deva u bar by deva x bar and if if I the uh, property of the element is elastic property then uh, one has to be equation corresponding that is the stress is equal to E multiplied by epsilon. So, if I choose the first order element that is a linear element right. So, that means the u bar must be linear the variation of u bar must be linear and in that case strain would be constant and stress would also be constant alright. But u bar must be a linear for the first order element. If you take the second order element, so u bar must be quadratic to represent the second order element and therefore, what would happen to the, uh, the strain if it is second uh, order element where the u bar is a quadratic. So, the strain must be linear and stress must also be linear and that is how uh, use higher order for problems with a smooth solution. So, elliptic uh, partial differential equations like right. So, you always one has to use a higher order for uh, problems where the smooth solutions are expected. As far as the solving uh, integration problem comes into as I told the nodes and integration points when you solve the problem integrals. So, uh, one usually one has to solve this integral concerned in the formulation here. Uh, or any finite element problem, uh, you have to solve it numerically. Generally, it is solved is numerically. So, here is the figure which shows the integration point. Suppose, this is the integral and uh, the dome, uh, the integral points are shown around x and the function corresponding function f x is shown around the y axis. So, if you solve it numerically, that means, uh, that is the integral uh, sigma uh, sigma uh, delta epsilon. So, suppose this is the integral. So, as I told it is the summation. So, this integral in uh, is nothing but the summation over p that is the point integration point and uh, sigma p epsilon uh, delta epsilon p v p that v p is the volume of the interest. So, generally uh, proper integration point is used and uh, whether it is a stresses, a strain etcetera at integral point. So, one can see here. So, that is the integral point 
and that represents the summation of so. So, different ways of choosing integration points are possible, however, uh, one can go for full integration where uh, 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 nth ips with n nodes on edges are there that means n number of uh, integral points are uh, with n nodes on the edges one can that is called we can say as the full integration uh, one can go also for the second case where the reduced integration are done so for in the reduced integration there is 1 minus 1 uh, integration point with n nodes on the edges are selected are taken so there are many ways to do this so if it is seen in nut cell what is the rule of thumb for choosing element out of this discussion so the rule of thumb for choosing elements uh, is that choosing the wrong element type is one of the most common mistake in finite element simulation uh, simulation if you choose a wrong element that's a great mistake so there are certain rule of uh, choices uh, for choosing a proper element so these is listed here so number one is that if the problem is elastic problem so choose second order element right and uh, in that case one has to go for reduce integration method uh, for solving the integral so that means if the problem is elastic choose second order using reduce integration points secondly never use fully integrated first order element in bending problems this is another suggestion if problem involves contact and does not converge so use first order element right if the problem contains stress strain discontinuities that is plasticity the first order may be better then if elements deform very heavily and in that case first order may be a better choice and uh, avoid first order triangular or uh, tetrahedron elements and uh, if the material is incompressible so one has to use hybrid elements that may also be better in plasticity problems and uh, look out for uh, 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 horse glassing with first order reduced integration element so and uh, if if following these rules even if there is any problem then one can consult uh, the program and manuals for available type of uh, element that is available and whatever guidelines are there one can consult their own program and manuals so but however these are the some of the thumb rules and as i as i said so uh, uh, based on these one has to then create a mess so creating a mess there are certain strict rules that means there should not be a free nodes nowhere when you create mess there should not be any free nodes like here this figure there is a free node here so do not mix up safe function of different order also you choose a uniform safe function like this on the right side this figure shows a mess so uh, for designing mess there are certain rules so uh, uh, if it uh, if it looks like good it is good that is a very uh, common sense but prefer quadrilaterals to triangular triangular elements and use regularly shaped elements right then large gradient require high density so that has to be taken care and uh, smooth size 
transitions must be used. So, if you follow uh, these basic rules, you may hang up a easy way, easy path for creating mess. There are many meshing algorithms available, but uh, like uh, a structured mesh, then triangular mesh, then mix 3 by 3 to 4 nodes, that is the mix one, triangular as well as uh, quadrilateral are restructured. And then there are also situation when there is a mix 3, 4 nodes and local re, with re, local refinement also. So, uh, this figure shows uh, the different algorithms one can choose. So, the user's choice is very important. If you start with a proper element, then proper machine algorithm, you hang up and you have the smooth way to get the solution. So, this shows the four different structures, uh, meshing algorithms, a structured triangular mesh, mixed 3, 4 elements and mixed 3, 4 elements with local refinement. So, one can see here, uh, the structured is very uniform, even the triangular mesh is quite useful. And uh, mix 1 is there and then sometimes the mix with local refinement is also preferred. And uh, so, looking into this, there are advantages, certain advantages and disadvantages of, of finite element method or analysis. When you design and especially in early stage of the design process, whenever you design usually what happens? Uh, designing a geometry is a different, but designing the geometry according to the load requirement and the problem or the constraint is another issue. So, there are certain advantages and disadvantages. Uh, in order to decrease development times in designing, it is necessary to apply finite element uh, method analysis, uh, even in very first step of a design process. So, this first finite element method analysis should be done by uh, the designer himself. Uh, without any doubt, it serves the opportunity for a significant speed up the design process. However, some problems uh, have to be taken into account, like uh, the you have a CAD data, if you look at this figure. You basically, you have a CAD data and then you have a FEM preprocessor and then you have suppose you have a uh, FEM solver. So, you will find that uh, from if you take this order CAD data, FEM processor and solver, then uh, there is a topically decreased in this order. So, that is the uh, initially the CAD data is hard, then the FEM processors and then the solver has to be pointed at the end. So, that is the decreasing uh, topically. And uh, uh, how, why, uh, however, there is an increased disconnections, right. So, this is what shows the data flow between CAD and FEM, right. So, the disconnection is more at the inside of the solver and the, it is minimum at the data uh, CAD of, but the as a topicality is concerned, it is maximum at the, at the data side and it is minimum at the solver side. So, actually the simulation, any simulation has uh, improved drastically and it depends on the knowledge, it, it depends on the practices and it also the complexity of the problem. Uh, basically, computer design system developers uh, designed a finite element method, menu structured especially tailored to be used this by a designer. The main goal uh, has been easy handling for solving the structure uh, standard problem.
problems. Thus, uh, any designer can apply simplified finite element method tools today and uh, only uh, very little training is recommended for proper use of these tools. So, handling of a complicated problem when it comes uh, and when it is uh, however, it is excluded for complicated situation. It is still uh, has to be done very uh, specialized manner. So, this figure shows the, the change in the complexity of soluble finite element problems and uh, personal knowledge which is required on that. So, if you look at that before 20 years where the knowledge was very less and uh, uh, complexity was not that much. So, now as you move today, the knowledge is used and uh, the complex, therefore, the complexity is reduced. So, earlier because the knowledge was less, the very complex problem was not possible to solve, but once our knowledge in finite element method is, is increases, one can solve uh, very complex problem, any metal forming problem. And uh, you will surprise to know that uh, in today's industry, where we talk of a finite element formulations for all kind of metal forming, including thermal, including uh, hybrid problems, right. So, uh, as far as the, the uh, people concerned in design groups are concerned, the finite element method calculations in the design area require changes in the staff management as well. A sound FEM uh, calculation requires appropriate training. Uh, one can uh, have only few commands of a very simple menu in finite element tuned for designers. There are so many softwares now available based on the tools, basic tools of finite element method. And thus, the training uh, are very short, but usually much uh, too short uh, and uh, knowledge about the functions of the commands only uh, is insufficient as it should be, it shows here in this data. Say for an example, uh, the reasons for incorrect finite element calculation by a designer has been uh, the chances which could be, that is if uh, the wrong application of the load, if the load is not applied, that is the, then the estimate would be only 20 percent you will get the result, if it is a wrong load. If there is a wrong application of the uh, restraints, so the chances is that you get 30 percent only estimate. If there is a wrong free cutting of the model, if you, if you do not take the proper uh, reason for uh, considering the finite element solution out of a big problem. So, there may be if it is chosen wrongly, then there is 40 percent estimate would appear. And uh, if there is a wrong handling of the finite element program itself, so there is a 10 percent uh, possibility only that so, obviously, about 90 percent of all incorrect calculations rely on missing basic knowledge in technical mechanics. In consequence, only designers familiar with basics in technical mechanics should do finite element calculation. Therefore, it is Therefore, expected that one who knows the technical mechanics of finite method, they must only solve. And uh, 
the, uh, if no if people do not know then it is better not to uh, try for the solution regarding the results of finite element calculation the missing knowledge of finite element method uh, basics easily results in enormous interpretation of these results too. So, even if designer never uh, might look at junctions and uh, elements face to face, they uh, importantly need well founded knowledge of the background therefore. Therefore, a conception for a training which has been successfully applied to around many more than uh, 300 designers. Uh, and uh, so, usually uh, that requires that the if, if it is 3 day program then for the first day one has to refresh the basic and task the exercises in technical mechanics, basics in finite element method and finite element theory the first day suppose if it is 3 day program for finite element method. Second day then one should handle the pro problem. So, that means the task exercises to any function with uh, practical backgrounds. Then third day workshop uh, with present problems and uh, models of the designer must be taken up. So, it has proved uh, usefully to add an additionally one day workshop <laughs> therefore, uh, on uh, one week after the training. One uh, can deal with the questions therefore, arising from the specific work of the company and uh, that is how one can improve upon. Uh, to solve the problems using a proper finite element training. Usually companies uh, already uh, they are already most of the companies are already equipped with finite element calculation and uh, along with their groups and they usually install finite element calculations into design process usual this is what is the usual practice in industries. So, beside the objective of any uh, recognition of the weak point in the design model the finite element calculation group whatever it is should be released from the daily routine work by this if one is going for the finite element. However, it will not work without specific supporting the designer by finite element method calculation specialist as this is what is say a designer is separate the finite element specialist is, uh, is separate. One has to be very quickly. Uh, so, the finite element uh, specialist has an objective and uh, uh, that he has to work on a particular CAD designer. So, you look at this is the one figure where the distribution of task and responsibilities between designer and FEM specialist has been shown here. Okay. So, uh, at the left side uh, the FEM specialist knows the objectives. So, whatever he receives a CAD model or design then after proper uh, discretization and then he will apply the choosing the proper element and then solve it. And therefore, the FEM is specially support the CAD designer. So, if there is something wrong the load because uh, a proper improper um, model there is something excess load. So, the FEM specialist after running the solver over the given uh, design can tell him that let us choose and change this shape from previous one to this one and then again try with the FEM solution and try the, the 
field variable calculation and then check whether it is now ok. So, a designer should never calculate with the highest possible accuracy, right, but hopefully only with sufficient accuracy has to. He needs objective for values of loads, stiffness and other goals for his optimized design. At this point, the finite element method specialist must uh, that means, convert complicated load cases to quasi static load, which is applicable by the designer. So, that is how the things will improve. And thirdly, uh, if one sees the, uh, the consequences for the organization, for any organization of finite element method calculation in a design process, because design process is what is the very important one. And uh, therefore, it will also uh, affect the process of design to achieve the goal of uh, intense time saving uh, uh, priorities and uh, time schedule have to be set. When, when there is a situation where you have to give the solution very quickly, but while uh, arguing about the invest uh, in hard and software like of uh, then the qualification of a personnel must be uh, has also to be seen and uh, where it, is, it must be sure that uh, this changes is going to give something. But if this important uh, last section is ignored or neglected, one can be sure that any investment in the computers and uh, personal uh, a proper specialist of a firm uh, will be will go in vain. So, the resulting therefore, will be only disappointing to the co workers and uh, to the others also. So, the present effort in time and money it matters then when one uses the finite element methods and uh, in a in a bulk in the problem solving then there are one has also to see the achievable savings and the effort uh, for the future and related investment and then only one can go for the new efforts and then proper sense. So, finite element application today whatever has been established, it is going to give you lot of saving. So, in fact, uh, it is often miss that uh, 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 installation of finite element method into design process uh, result in increase work to be done by a designer. It is not like in principle, this should be uh, no problem for weak points in models, will be recognized and removed uh, in an early stage therefore. This investment in time and money usually uh, uh, will be saved in multiple in later stages of the project therefore. However, the large a company depends on the, the company how large it is and the uh, other division uh, like uh, the harder the realization of this change in the time management if it is there any. So, it, it uh, come to pass that the time schedule for designer uh, may be shortened for and uh, for installation of finite element method into design process. Therefore, it should save time. In fact, as a rule of thumb, a 
reinvestment of about 1 by 3 of the saving in time and money is necessary. Suppose if there is a 100 day of equipment uh, experiment should be saved, if 100 days of experiment should be saved and investment therefore of around 30 days in simulation is required. So, that is the how the order. In fact, uh, one will save only 70 days in this case. The same re uh, relation of saving to reinvest uh, is effective if any FEM calculation are in the group should be uh, therefore relieved. About one third of the time saved has to be uh, reinvested in support of the designer to enable them to achieve the uh, this relief of the fact, right? So this is what's the the importance to variety of important decision uh, in an early stage of the uh, project is shown here. Uh, another figure where the ratio of uh, presently accumulated cost to the cost which is generated at the moment of while running the project is shown here. So, this is what the shows the generated cost and this is what is the accumulated cost. So, the run of the ratio of the actual accumulated cost to the, the cost which is generated at this time if you look at here. For the future was uh, investigated and this has been shown here for run time of a typical project. So, one can see that the study, this study shows that more than 80 percent of the cars are generated in the first stage of the project, where only little costs accumulate. These important results are well known since about 20 years. However, uh, it took unless uh, until the recent year to start a process of uh, uh, many other implementation of effective tools for simulation into the group, various groups of the, uh, those are responsible for development and design. But without change in the uh, project and time management, the success uh, becomes dangerous. The fourth thing one has to see that the possible uh, versus sufficient accuracy of the finite element solution in the design process as I told. One argument sometimes uh, comes especially uh, FEM side, FEM specialist side against implementation of finite element method into design process. Uh, is the lack of accuracy of the calculation. Sure, a designer generally will conduct calculation with large errors for the work with this specified problem, but is this reality, is this really an uh, argument against finite element method in design? Hmm? No, accuracy is no end in itself, not seldom. Meaningful work like uh, island or ivory tower are uttered in companies while taking uh, um, and uh, discussing or talking about the FEM simulation and calculation over the groups. So, in order to objectify this discussion as far as whether when it has to be used during the design process, uh, which uh, become rather emotional. The result of investigation of an other people like economists and uh, many other things uh, studies was carried out. And uh, this can be, it is shown here that is we call it as the Pareto uh, chart 
here. So, this shows result about 80 percent of a goal are reached with 20 percent of the effort needed to reach 100 percent of the goal. So, one can see here the goal has been here, the effort is now 100 percent. So, that is the one by one may way understanding between the designer, between the CAD modeler and then running it, then changing. So, some this may, this process may cause sometimes misunderstanding, but this data shows that uh, about 80 percent of a goal are reached within 20 percent of the effort needed to reach 100 percent of the total goal. So, usually this is what is the a basic uh, discussion application of uh, Pareto principle uh, to the accuracy of finite element application uh, calculations in the design if one sees that means, if you apply the Pareto principle. So, the calculation will speed up by a factor of around 5 if an accuracy of 80 percent is sufficient. Even in the very first step of design process accuracy is not needed, just the feasibility of the idea has to be checked initially. And approach of any goal with a uh, say butter of 20 percent should be sufficient and effective. Uh, self evident uh, not uh, every calculation must be carried out by designer, if high requirements are met no buffer can be defined and high accuracy is needed. These calculation in fact, belong to well trained specialist therefore. So, the specialist becomes FEM specialist become much much important here. Uh, inquiries at several companies, uh, it shows that a buffer of around 20 percent is sufficient for practical work. Most experiment uh, shows uh, much higher variation. Now, the time where any calculation uh, which was computed uh, uh, as uh, exactly as even possible come to an end therefore, now today designer and calculators must answer the question of the ratio between economic viability and accuracy of the calculation. So, this has to answer. So, this discussion I especially took to uh, see that the, this concept, because at all when we apply the, uh, when we are going to model finite element method to various metal forming problems how the designer specialization and the understanding with the CAD modeler it becomes important. So, the process is tedious, but the accuracy investment on software and hardware as far is concerned. Today, most of the companies are following FEM, but it is and they are getting benefited. So, this is what about the two days uh, discussion we, the basic, so far we have discussed the basics of FEM. Now, from the next, uh, in next lecture we would cover, we may, uh, we would take 1D problem and 2D problem. Now, let us, these methods let us apply and uh, let us start with a very simple situations, cases to discuss tomorrow uh, and uh, hopefully you will you will come prepared next in the next lecture and uh, so that uh, let us see how it can be useful for but these discussion at the inside which we cover today this is just for the sake of applicability of finite element to the designer and then how these are related and especially at the industry, 
industrial approach one has to and where the uh, the cost is seen anything in the industry is looked in terms of return so that's how i discuss a little bit here so i once again thank you all for keeping so much patience and uh, please give your suggestions give your feedback over the net and uh, so that if you can make further better for you so thank you thank you thank you very much